So I've just sat down to work on my uh, Tom Daly inspired cardigan again. And I thought there probably are other people out there as well that would like to make it, but I don't really know how. Um, I watched him on YouTube the other day and he said how it started out as a hexagon granny square, but it's not done with a granny stitch. And looking closely at his cardigans, obviously inspected them thoroughly, you can see that the granny square is there and it has to have six sides. Um, so you work three clusters of double crochets or treble crochets in British terminology six times to get your original hexagon and then you just carry on row on row on row. Now what I did notice with his is that he wasn't going into the posts of the treble crochets, he was actually going into the uh, the spaces. So that's what I've been doing. So I was just going to carry on with that and sort of chat to you how I went about it. So yeah, as long as your granny square starts as a hexagon with six sides, you're good to go. And you carry on making it until the size that you need it. Now, at the moment, this will fit my son. I will need to join it together and I'll show you that in a little while. And the magic that is creating half a cardigan from a hexagon. Because I've wanted to make one of these for ages but didn't really know where to start. And I'll be honest, I'm winging it because there was a couple of um, false starts. One ended up with seven sides. I think it still makes a shape that would not be half a cardigan. It just gives you quite a dramatic point at the sides and on your sleeve. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> it's just going to finish. This is going to be my last round on this side. And the other side has got the same number. How many have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. And then what you need to do afterwards is join the top of the sleeves together. And it's a bit like what I'm working on now. So you'd stitch across here and you'd join them down the back. But I also want to add cuffs to these because it's quite a wide sleeve for a boy. So I'm going to take it in and make it almost like um, a bomber jacket. So it's going to have a cuff here. And I'm also going to create some sort of ribbing type cuff situation along the bottom. And I might add some extra rounds in up the front and around the neck to make it a bit of a nicer shape. So I'm wondering if there might be quite a bit of stress on this corner here, if that's the top and that's worn on the neck all the time. So yeah, might introduce a bit of a, a collar down the front, but we'll see. Like I say, winging it as I go along. I was considering doing another one of these um, videos as well when it comes to my daughter's daisy jumper. And I could demonstrate different size daisies because I'm working on a cardigan for myself. I might even turn that into a two piece, um, make a vest underneath, coordinating vest, might have daisies on it, might not, don't know. Like I say, I'll wing these things. Just see something that I like the look of or something pops into my head and I think I have to make it and I'll give it a go and see how it turns out. So far, really like uh, my daughter's jumper. Probably would quite like one for me. But then that's where I practiced doing a cuff and turned hers into a bit of a, a balloon sleeve jumper and it fits her really nicely. And the other ideal thing is when you are making these things yourself, they're made to order, aren't they? So you make them to fit your small human the best way that you can. And my little girl comes up quite small in sizes and I can never rely on buying something in her age range for it to fit her. So... It's nice to be able to make something that is perfectly made for the unique little person that she is. I'm just working a corner here. Now I said at the beginning you do six lots of three treble crochet clusters, chain two in between each and they're the spaces that you work in to begin with. On the corners thereafter you only do two treble crochet, chain two, and then do another two and that is your corner and then carry on down the side so yeah this will be done soon I'll try and put 
a few video clips together so you can see the two pieces side by side when they're done then join together and hopefully cuffed and then I'm looking forward to doing another little reel of my son wearing this like I did with my daughter I really like that it's just a nice little keepsake for me as well but yeah she's a bit of a poser anyway so <laughs> enjoys the opportunity to be in front of the camera any chance she gets unlike her mother that's why you can only see her hands but I hope this helps anybody that has seen this and thought, wow, it's really lovely. And to encourage you to have a go as well, because, you know, I've, I've made mistakes making this. I make mistakes all the time. You know, we learn from them, don't we? We did it perfect every time. It wouldn't be so rewarding when we get it right. So, yeah, I'm going to finish this up with my knotty wall. And I'll possibly <laughs> come back at some point and uh, show you the rest. For anybody um, admiring my hook, I know I basically you choke hold mine. I know people crochet in different ways. Some do it like this, don't they? Which I can do, but it's not as comfortable for me. It's funny, because I can hold a pen like this, but not a crochet. She says she can do it, look, now she's stuck. There you go. But then that's part of the process as well, I think, when you start um, crocheting, is figuring out actually how to hold it all. Because to begin with, it's really blooming fiddly. But once you've found your way, and a way that you're comfortable, and for me, it's basically full grip of the hook. You're off and you're ready. But yeah, this hook is one by uh, Little Gems Craft, I believe. Yeah, I got it from her D-Stash page a few months ago. But I have ordered another hook. I've got a thing for strawberries at the moment and ordered one that she'd made with strawberries all over it as well. Yeah, we're back at another corner. And then I've got a couple more sides left. So I'm just going to do one, two, treble crochet, chain two, two treble crochet again. And then carry on working <clears throat> in the chain spaces which I think also is partly why I'm really enjoying making this so I'm not searching for that little bit to put my hook in I get all that space there to put it in it's a lot easier to do this and film now that I have a craft room. So I'm hoping to do some more tutorials and things. But anyway, I'm going to carry on with this and hopefully come back to you at some point with um, a successful <laughs> Tom Daly inspired cardigan. So catch you on the flip side. I was just reflecting and thinking about the comment I made about how my daughter loves being in front of the camera, but not me. And people will probably think, you know, hang on, love, you was on um, Kirsty Sam, hey Christmas, wouldn't you? And I'll be honest, the idea of being on cameras and stuff, terrifying. But the idea of meeting other crafty people, you know, the fact you only live once, and you've got to give these things a try. And uh, obviously meeting Kirsty also. And I don't know, I entered it and... Like most people that do, I suppose. I didn't expect to hear back. I didn't, I didn't expect to end up on it at all. I still can't quite believe it, to be honest. You know, and I met some crafting friends for life. So, any of you keen crocheters out there, considering it, have a look at the competitions. See what's open. 
and apply and send your IDs in. I'd actually applied for a few of the different ones because I could think of different things to make for all of them. And alongside your application, you send in photos of your work. And it was my dear head that I'd made for my daughter's room that the show liked and wanted me to make. So automatically entered me into the uh, decoration competition, which, yeah, I couldn't believe it when I got that phone call. Sort of shaky, nervous excited all the good stuff but yeah um concentrating now look she can't talk and go into the top of that chain three but yeah any of you out there got an idea or have made a few things then people can see a few examples of your work with your application give it a go honestly you won't regret it. It was such a lovely experience and yeah, meeting Kirsty, obviously memorable, but the runners and the crew and everyone was just so lovely as well. And everyone was sociable and chatty and I had a good laugh. I had a really good laugh and I think that was quite evident. And yeah, Ginny is hilarious. Give it a go if you think you want to. I wouldn't even say if you think you could win or you think you're good enough because... I can't say I thought I was good enough. I just gave it a go and look what happened. So give it a go. And let me know if you do. So the magic that is half of a hexagon cardigan because you won't believe it's so blooming easy, to be honest. So yeah, got our six sides. I think, I don't know. I've got a feeling that I want to make this where all my joins are, my sleeve end. So then I can start cuffing on the edge of that and make it even stronger. So fold that in half. And this, where we started, the very centre, becomes the armpit. So there it is. If she lines it up properly. Yeah. Sleeve. Body. And, just like Blue Peter, here's one I prepared earlier. There's the other side. So, it's really cool, isn't it? I really love the effect. Like the two-tone look of it. Clever Mr. Daly. But yeah, I just saw he made one for him and one for his little boy, Robbie. And I was like, oh, really like it. Need to make one. Like I say, just through inspecting his work and what he said about the beginning and it has to be a hexagon. I'm really pleased with it. So yeah, now left to do, join up here. Whoop. Join the tops of my sleeves together. Cuff, rib, and add some sort of collar. Might just add a few more rounds, but include the top. Yeah, insanely clever and simple. And whoever thought of this as a general concept is a genius. And I will be making more. I'll be making one for my daughter. I'm thinking maybe pastel rainbow effect. And for me, but I can't decide what colours for me. But yeah. Oh, good.